Good afternoon, everyone. New NASA report out, the solar minimum's coming. They're only talking about the 11-year cycle, and they left out a lot of facts. So let's fill it in for you here. They talk about the sunspot count with relatively high numbers for this solar cycle. Well, in reality, it's the lowest in the last 100 years. The forecast out for the next solar cycle as well brings us into a grand solar minimum, which is on its regular either 200 or 400 year cyclical pattern. They talk about galactic cosmic rays increasing. They say it only affects astronauts. Well, it's going to affect our Earth too. 19% increase already happening across several areas of the planet. What that means is more atmospheric compression events, electrical weirdness across the skies and intensification. Things that are considered rare now are becoming commonplace. Massive floods will increase, and they even talk about the atmosphere compressing during this time. They also talk about geomagnetic storms and auroras, yet they didn't tell you we've had the most intense auroras ever observed, except for the Carrington event 140 years ago. These blue auroras turning to white are the strongest that there are. Both Northern and Southern Hemisphere witnessed three times this year. And they also talk about the solar activity will change form. Now, NASA, an internally combusted star cannot change form. It's supposed to be combusting at a static rate. The electric universe would explain all of these changes in the grand solar minimum and the 11-year solar cycle. But what's this all mean for you and me? Well, we're not going to be able to grow crops as we do today because the seasons are going to be so unstable and the timing of planting is going to be affected as well as harvesting. Case in point, this late season blizzard that rolled across and destroyed at least 30% of the U.S. wheat crop. We've seen intense ice storms decimating vegetable crops across Europe, the freezes that have wreaked havoc on the fruit orchards globally, and the wine vineyards. And it is only the beginning of the intensification. When the crops go, our economy crashes, and it's a reset button for us. I encourage you to do all of your own research. And while you're watching the video, please remember to subscribe to ADAPT2030. So I definitely encourage you to look at this report by NASA here, the solar minimum is coming. It's also a written article as well as a video that they've included. Now in the video, they actually talk about the sunspot count being relatively high for solar cycle 24. But when we look back through history, it's really the lowest in the last 100 years. This is an overlay of the different solar cycles. As you can see, the red line is where we are now, well below anything since the early 1900s, late 1800s. And as we ramp up and get into solar cycle 25, it's going to be even lower than today. This is based on the solar polar field strength. Now using this same solar polar fields, the forecast can be put out by canceling waves. This is Zarkova, Zarkov, Popov, and Shepard. Forecasting at least a Dalton minimum type cooling, which is 1.5 C decline in temperatures, which will reach its coolest point around 2022. Going into the solar cycle 26, that brings us into the modern minimum. We're not gonna recover very much and it's gonna continue to cool. And when we're looking for activity of new signs of the strength of the new solar cycle, 25, it's just not there. And if you never heard of a grand solar minimum before, they occur on 200 or 400 year cycles, depending on the intensity. And we're descending into another one right now. This is the reason you're seeing all these unusual weather patterns and changes across the planet. Now, also continuing with the article, they talk about galactic cosmic rays increasing as the sun's output decreases. There's an inverse relationship in this. And solar cycle 25 is actually going to have 19% more galactic cosmic rays than this last cycle, which has really ramped up in the last two years. So we're looking for exponential increases in the amount of severe weather, floods, etc., the increases really began around February 2015, and then it added 11% just over that year and a half. And you've seen the weather severity increase along with the galactic cosmic rays. Now, on top of this, we're going to add another 19%. And it's already starting to show in areas such as New England in the Northeast United States. So the lower the solar activity is, the more galactic cosmic rays come in. 
And the forecast is just up and up and up on this. It's probably going to exceed the forecast due to the grand solar minimum. And that blue line on the top there, solar cycle 24, there'll actually be a line even north of that, probably above 7,000 here for solar cycle 25. Now, the NASA article also talks about Earth's upper atmosphere cools and then compresses because there's no solar wind except from coronal hole streams. A graphic here, low Earth orbit, it's kind of expanded, and then when the solar minimum comes in, it compresses. But we're going into a grand solar minimum, which means that thing is going to be non-existent. Now, this has several effects. First, the galactic cosmic rays are responsible for increasing cloud formation on the Earth, which also has an albedo effect in addition to the increased precipitation. Heinrich Svensmark, you want to check out the movie The Cloud Mystery, available on YouTube for free. This will explain everything in such great detail. Easy to explain, easy to understand. At the end of that movie, everything you've ever learned about global warming, you will question it. These low clouds form between 15,000 and 18,500 feet, and they create electrical activity within them. This is an entirely new cloud layer being formed on the planet density-wise. Look for increased electrical activity, ground-to-sky lightning, arcing lightning, positive lightning, and then these sprites are starting to show up. They used to be rare, but now the severity and intensity of these things before, they were just a little blip, and they could barely capture it on the film. Now it's this large where it's easily discernible. Just as an example here, this is one of the storms that rolled over the U.S. that destroyed the wheat crop. Look how much electrical activity was in that front. You can even see it through the day here. And it has that cyclonic twisting pattern, which is now overland, which exclusively used to be typhoons or hurricanes over the water. Late season blizzard coming through with literally hurricane force winds, snow, ice that just devastated the wheat crop of the United States. Not only that, but these what were considered rare events. Now they're starting to show up every single month. Red jellyfish sprites, blue elves. Blue Jets. This can all be explained through the electric universe, but look for increases in these events to where the ancients talked about this, what they saw in the skies. Plasma and electrical activity. Case in point, these atmospheric compression event downbursts are increasing exponentially across this planet. You're going to see more and more of these. As the cloud layers increase and as we get into the lower solar activity, you know, we're only in the first two years of a grand solar minimum that will culminate around 2030. We have a lot more changes in our atmosphere to occur before we're even anywhere near the midpoint. We still have five years or so before we even get to the coolest and sort of to the midpoint where things might balance. So much rain coming down and these literally rivers from the sky, waterfalls off bridges after rainfalls. Massive flooding, destroying crops. This is the United States. And it's at the point now where it's really becoming unprecedented and record every single time there's a storm now. It's bringing us on the 500 or 1,000 year floods every single event. And now also with the atmosphere change, and we're seeing these sun halos, I mean planet wide. Every continent, there's been hundreds of these reported in just the last two weeks. Do a Google search and you're going to see it's happening everywhere. And then we've got extreme rainfall, southern Florida. And it's affecting planting too. You know, up in Canada, they had so much rain that they couldn't plant in time. And every time the grand solar minimum comes, it's also with the effects of the galactic cosmic rays on our crust, major volcanic eruptions. But that adds to the albedo effect because the ash in the air mixed with the new cloud layer from the galactic cosmic rays albedo effect and our earth starts to cool you're going to start to see a lot more major eruptions massive storms that are just completely unprecedented severe flooding more eruptions more eruptions ash up 40 50 60 000 feet are now becoming commonplace and everything that i'm showing you here is just in june and then they talk about the geomagnetic storms increasing from the coronal hole streams coming off with the solar wind. Now, back in April, 
The solar storms were so intense that it knocked down power grids in New York City, San Francisco, across the United States and parts of the Northern Hemisphere, including Europe and Scotland. The auroras were so highly charged that it became blue, trending toward white in the upper reaches of our atmosphere, literally connecting Brooklyn currents back to the sun in space. That's how intense these were. These blue is rare. It, it's so highly charged. I mean, red is considered dangerous. Blue is just at the borderline of unprecedented direct current from the sun right into our poles. And it wasn't just the northern hemisphere. It was the southern hemisphere as well. They experienced this several times, at least three times this year so far. They've experienced blue auroras, new lights, and new types of electrical phenomena in the sky. They had to even rename this thing called Steve, this auroral jet or whatever it might be, because I've never seen it before. But it's happened twice this year. And then the article continues again, solar activity simply changes form. The sun goes from its heightened state into a solar minimum on an 11 year pattern. And then mixed in with that on the 200 or 400 year pattern in the grand solar minimum. I thought it was an internally combusting star, NASA. It can't have that much variance if it is. And especially on a cyclical pattern of 11 years average. And the grand solar minimums returning on 400 year average. It can only be explained by the electric universe. That is the only possible explanation there. There's a common electrical principle that's evident on the earth, the sun, the galaxy, and in our entire universe. And it goes from nano sized particles and neurons down in your brain, all the way up to galaxies that are connecting in the entire universe. When you look at these, they are fractals of each other. And the electric universe connects it all. It is the ether which all matter exists, electrical as well as physical. It explains how the universe works and how our sun can go through grand solar minimums and how these changes in the output of the sun can occur on regular patterns that are electrical waves in nature with strength and decline. I encourage you, Thunderbolts, Electric Sky, Electric Universe, these books will get you started. But all in all, the reason I'm making this video is because I want you to really understand that our weather patterns, because of all these other factors, those are causes. The effect is going to be our growing patterns are no longer going to be stable planet-wide. This includes the Southern Hemisphere and the Northern Hemisphere, which is going to increase crop losses. And there's so many people on this earth right now that rely on plant in this time, harvest in this time. I know we have extra in the silos from the abundant heat that we had, but now it's quickly turning off when we're getting into the lower solar activity here. So when storms like this start to become the norm, when crops are already up because of warmer spring and then late season freezes come in they freeze the buds on trees they decimate the crops that are already up this is becoming the normal this is what they experience in the maunder minimum this is what they experience in the wolf minimum there's so much documentation from the 1300s the 1600s the 1800s that all show the exact same thing they couldn't grow their food there was either drought too much rain out of season storms and people starved to death everywhere during these events it was a reset button for the economy it was a reset button for society global population declined 25 percent in the monitor minimum and here we are reliant on so many delivery systems and banking systems to get the delivery moving through all these letters of credit and if there's a break in even one point this just-in-time delivery goes bye-bye and you have nothing coming to your stores you are absolutely going to need to rely on yourself more and I thank you so much for watching the video. This is your head start here. I hope you do your own research because it is intensifying. It has been since last year. They're really trying to bury it in the media, but now it needs to come out and they are going to try to do so much damage control. This is an instance of it. They're telling you about the regular 11 year cycle, but they're not filling you in about the grand solar minimum and all these other effects that are going to intensify wildly far beyond anything that you have ever seen in your lifetime or your grandparents have ever seen. We are repeating a 400-year cycle right now. 
It's just the beginning. You have time to get ready, and those who are prepared are the ones that will survive. You will thrive during this time, and that's why I make these videos. I want you to prosper. I want you to live fruitful lives. I want you to be prepared. We're all in this together. We can't just jump off this planet and go somewhere else to ride it out while everything here becomes a tumultuous state of existence. We're in it together. We all need to help each other. And one of the things, whether you buy these seeds or you don't, you need to learn to know how to grow your own food, period. You need to get heirloom seeds so you can take those up to seed after growing. Harvest what you need to eat. Let some of it go to seed. Save that, preserve it so you can grow next year's garden. Food for Liberty has a great heirloom vegetable seed kit. Has 130,000 types of seeds and 38 different varieties in there. It's enough to grow 10 acres. And again, whether you buy their seed pack I encourage you to take a look at what they have. They have water filters and other survival supplies that'll help you get ready. But if you're on your own, you need to think heirloom seeds and start at least experimenting. I don't care if you're planter gardening on the windowsill of your house, but you better start experimenting on how to grow stuff right now.